the U.S. Air Force has commenced flight testing of a new external pylon for its B-1B Lancer bombers. The pylon will accommodate a wide range of munitions, including larger weapons and hypersonic cruise missiles. The testing of the Load Adaptable Modular Pylon, or LAM, reflects the continued importance of the B-1 to the Air Force. Despite the planned retirement of the bomber, its value remains high, particularly in terms of its ability to carry large and diverse payloads over long distances. It has also been designated as a hypersonic weapons test platform. The U.S. Air Force announced today that the 412th Test Wing at Edwards Air Force Base, California, has tested the Boeing-designed LAM, which it says is planned to remove traditional weapon constraints. The new pylon was flown attached to a B-1B assigned to the wing's 419th Flight Test Squadron. In photos dated February 7th and February 15th, 2024, a B-1B test aircraft is seen with a single LAM pylon fitted under the port side of the forward fuselage, roughly adjacent to the start of the wing route. It appears to be loaded with an inert 2,000-pound class joint direct attack munition. This seems to be in the exact same location the B-1 uses when carrying the ANAAQ-33 Sniper Advanced targeting pod. In a statement, the Air Force explained that the unique pylon is designed to carry a variety of standard and emerging weapons with seamless transition, allowing for maximum agility while also strengthening weapon test infrastructure. While the B-1B was chosen due to aircraft availability at Edwards, the LM can be modified for attachment to a variety of other aircraft if the need were to arise. B-1 LAM pylon is a load adaptable modular pylon that's going to be used to allow us to carry a variety of different weapons and different weapon configurations on the external pylons of the B-1. Uh, and that'll enable weapon delivery and testing in a variety of different configurations and to include new different weapon uh, release files. While the possibility of the LAM to accommodate hypersonic weapons wasn't mentioned by the Air Force in its release. This is something that Boeing officials have mentioned in the past in relation to the pylon. The introduction of hypersonic missiles is increasingly seen as fundamental to ensuring the B-1 remains relevant until replaced by the B-21 Raider stealth bomber, which is now under test. At the same time, several experimental air-launched hypersonic missiles have been tested, albeit with mixed results so far. While an external weapons carriage capability was a part of the plans for the B-1 in the Cold War, it subsequently fell out of favor, being removed to make the bombers compliant with New START, Strategic Arms Reduction Treaty, regulations. More recently, the capability has been reactivated to accommodate additional weapons. Work to reactivate the B-1's hardpoints initially focused on the carriage of up to a dozen more subsonic AGM-158 Joint Air-to-Surface Standoff Missile JSSM, cruise missiles, or AGM-158C Long Range Anti-Ship Missile LARASM derivatives, in addition to 24 more of either of those weapons that fit in its internal bomb base. The ability to carry such a large number of LRASMs would make the LAM-equipped B-1 a notably potent and unpredictable weapon in any future campaign waged against Chinese naval forces in the Asia-Pacific theater. For hypersonic weapons, which are dimensionally large, external carriage also makes a lot of sense. Boeing has said in the past that the B-1 will eventually be fitted with six LAMs, each of which can carry two missiles, and the company has said these will include two distinct types, 
boost glide vehicles, and air breathing missiles. The Cold War era B-1B was designed with six external hardpoints, each of which could carry two examples of the nuclear-tipped AGM-86B air-launched cruise missile, or ALCM. In relation to LAM, Boeing has previously talked about the largest hypersonic missiles envisaged for the B-1 weighing around 5,000 pounds and being more than 20 feet long. That could suggest the AGM-183A air-launched rapid response weapon, or ARRW, was the boost glide vehicle in question. However, in March this year, the Air Force announced that it was canceling further work on the AGM-183A, though it would still complete the rest of its already planned ARRW flight tests. ARW's test record is patchy, at best, and the Air Force declined to say whether the most recent known test of that design, which occurred in August, was a success or failure. At one point, it was planned that ARW would be the U.S. Air Force's first hypersonic weapon. Nevertheless, there could still be an ARW follow-on of some kind in the works, in the classified realm, a possibility reinforced by the continued testing of the AGM-183 after its cancellation had been announced. In the other category, air-breathing missiles, are such weapons as the Hypersonic Air-Breathing Weapon Concept, or HAWC, a scramjet vehicle, and the Hypersonic Attack Cruise Missile, or HACM, another program involving an air-breathing weapon that is intended to be suitable for carriage by fighter and bomber aircraft. At the same time, the LAM pylons are also intended to boost the B-1's ability to carry existing conventional weaponry, too, including 12 of the aforementioned JSSM cruise missiles and their derivatives. Taking the example of a smaller weapon, the LAM modification would potentially allow a single B-1 to carry no fewer than 144 small diameter bombs, SDBs, 48 of them externally. With the LAM now in testing, it will have to be fully integrated and proven. After that, captive carry trials of representative payloads should begin, followed by the release of inert weapons and finally end-to-end -end testing. 